This is a story called A Mother's Story. Lisa and Shane are parents to ten beautiful kids. The couple both own their own businesses and the kids are well turned out and they want for nothing. Then one day Shane starts getting the most horrendous headaches. When he went to the doctors they sent him to the hospital just as a precaution. When the results of the brain scan came in he was told that he had, to, he had stage 4 brain cancer and he was given 6 weeks to live. During those weeks the family made as many memories as they possibly could. She made videos for each of the kids to remember him by. After six weeks, Shane was still alive and remained alive for another month. And then he sadly passed away with Lisa, his parents and his siblings by his side. Their oldest child, Ella, was only just 11 years old. The other kids were younger. Kerry was nine and a half, Macy was eight. Holly, Isla and Isabella were seven years old. Ivy was six years old. Isaac was five, George was three, and Tommy was 15 months. When they heard the news that their daddy had passed away, they were devastated. Shane had made a separate video for each of them. A few months after he died, Ella's behaviour changed dramatically. Lisa knew that she was grieving the loss of her dad but she was behaving uncontrollably, becoming uncontrollable. She constantly mouthed off at Lisa, picked on the other kids and stayed out until all hours of the night. One night she was supposed to be in by 7pm, but at 9pm she still wasn't home. Lisa had no choice to get the other kids out of bed get them in the car and to go look for her. Just as she set off, she saw her and made her get in the car. Then she said to her, Where have you been, young lady? You were supposed to be in at 7pm. I've been really sick. Then Ella said, Get over yourself, Mum. I'll do what I want. Besides, I was only hanging out with some friends. I don't see what the big deal is. The big deal is you're too young to be out until this time. You're grounded for two weeks. If I see you even attempting to leave the house, you'll be grounded for four weeks. Is that clear, young lady? said Lisa. Leave me alone, Mum. I'll do as I please, said Ella. The following day, Lisa got a phone call saying that Ella wasn't in school and that she hadn't been there at all the week before. Lisa knew that this wasn't like Ella because she loved school and she was very clever. Lisa waited for her to come home from school after she picked up the other kids. When she came home, she asked her, How was school? School was fine, Mum. Do you have any homework? No, Mum. I know you're lying, young lady. You didn't go to school today or any day last week. Your teacher phoned me and told me. She also told me that you haven't handed in any assignments this term. I want to know where you've been and what you've been up to. Don't even think about lying to me because you're in enough trouble as it is. I'll do what I want, Mum. Leave me alone. I told you last night that you are grounded for two weeks, but now you are grounded for a whole month. You will use that time to catch up on all the assignments you should have already done. There will be no TV for the week. I have got your phone and I'll keep it until further notice. At that moment, Holly came in crying because she'd fallen and hurt herself. As Lisa was saying to her, Ella, who was supposed to be doing her assignments, sneaked out behind her back. That night when it got to about 8pm, Ella still wasn't home. Lisa phoned her parents and got them to come over and look after the other kids. When they arrived, Lisa got in her car and went looking for her. When she found her, she told her to get in the car, but she refused. Lisa got out of the car and grabbed her and forced her into the car. 
When she got home, she told her that she was now grounded until further noise and sent her to bed. The next morning, she got her up an hour earlier than usual so that she could work on one of her assignments. That morning, Lisa told her that she was taking her to school and picking her up afterwards every day from now on. However, as soon as Lisa drove away, Ella ran off. The school phoned Lisa straight away and told her. Lisa went looking for her, but at first she couldn't find her. When she did, she took her to school and then straight to her classroom. That night, when Lisa went to pick Ella up from school, she'd already left. Lisa went straight home, hoping that she'd be there, but she wasn't. She dropped the other kids off at her parents and then went looking for her. When she found her, she was with some kids who were about 18 or 19 years old. Lisa saw one of them giving her some bags of white stuff. She knew straight away that it was drugs. She went over and grabbed Ella and made her get in the car. Then she locked, she locked her in and went over to the other kids and asked them, Why are you, give, why are, are you getting my 11-year-old daughter to sell drugs for you? One of them said, Are you looking for trouble, lady? If you are, then you've come to the right place. Just leave my little girl alone and stay away from her. When Lisa got Ella home, she took her bag off her and then emptied the drugs down the toilet. The next day, she dropped Ella at school and made sure that she went in. However, as soon as she left, Ella tried to leave the premises, but the staff managed to stop her. At lunchtime, time, she managed to sneak off the school premises. What she didn't realise was that Lisa was sat in her car and not far away from the school. As soon as she left the school premises, Lisa followed her from a safe distance. When she met up with the other kids again, Lisa saw them talking to her, and then she saw one of them get some bags out. Get, then she saw one of them get some drugs out of their bag, and as they did, they handed them to Ella for their to sell. She took a photo. Then Ella moved away from the gang of, of other kids and Lisa followed her. She could see that she was terrified of the older kids because as she was walking away from them, one of them grabbed her and threatened her with a knife. And Lisa managed to get a clear photograph of this. As Ella left, Lisa followed her and she saw her sell the drugs to an older guy who must have been in his mid-twenties. Lisa took a photo of the man giving Ella the money for the drugs she'd given him. Then she switched her phone to video mode as the other kids approached Ella and gave her some more drugs to sell. Then they threatened her with a knife again. Ella was obviously terrified. When she moved away from the gang, Lisa drove up to her and told her to get in the car. As Ella did so, the gang ran towards the car, but Lisa managed to drive away before they could get to them. When Lisa got Ella home, she said to her, I know what you've been doing, Ella. I got everything on my phone. Ella started to cry. Lisa said to her, It's okay, sweetheart, you are not in any trouble but we have to call the police so that they can put these kids away. Ella went upstairs to have a bath and Lisa called the police. When they got there, Lisa showed them the photos and the videos. They told her that they knew about the gang and what they were doing because another mother had come forward a couple of hours before Lisa did. The gang were arrested and in court they all pleaded guilty and were spread out in different young offenders institutes. Ella was soon back to her normal self. She caught up with all of her schoolwork and she is doing really well in school again. When she grows up she wants to be a police officer. Both her and Lisa told their story to the whole school in the hope that this would stop what happened to Ella happening to the other kids. The end. Thanks for watching guys, hope you like it. Mm -hmm.